morning and welcome to the 10th meeting of the Health and Sport Committee in 2012. Can I remind all of those present that mobile phones and blackberries uh, should be turned off as they often interfere with uh, microphone systems. Uh, apologies have been received from uh, Drew Smith this morning panel. Can I welcome Andrew Lowe, President, uh, uh, President Association of Directors of Social Work. Theresa Fife, Director of Royal College of Nursing. Dr John Gillis, um, Chair, Royal College of General Practitioners, Scotland. Phil Gray, Chief Executive, Chartered Society of Physiotherapy. Welcome to you all. Um, can we move to our first question from the committee, which is from Richard Lyle. Uh, good morning, and uh, morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, can I move s uh, straight to the submission made by the AESW Association of Directors of Social Work? And maybe I, I, I would welcome any comments uh, in regards to the submission. They say we acknowledge the cross-party drive for increased integration for health and social care as a potential solution to the immense challenge that faces the whole public sector. Uh, they then go on to base the ADSW proposal, uh, achieving the best outcomes, early intervention, personal care, supporting, empowering, similar pathways uh, of care. You then detail nine points of your plan. You may want to uh, go through your plan um, because within the plan, I don't see anything different from what we've done before. Could you explain to me or uh, set out what is different from what we've done before and how you feel about the integration of uh, uh, care? Thank you. I'd be very pleased to do that. Um, ADS, uh, ADSW um, approached this debate with great vigour uh, last summer and has continued to be uh, very, very keen to be a part in this because we're committed to improvement, because we understand the financial context and because we want the best thing for Scotland's older people. So there's no question about that. And um, we were delighted to see in the Cabinet Secretary's announcement in December many of the principles that we'd argued for over the summer. So just to be very clear at the outset, um, we are an ally in the desire uh, to integrate and to move things forward. We set out um, a series of points that we thought were important uh, in, in making this um, integration work, and uh, they were founded upon evidence, and uh, members of this committee would have seen the evidence paper that we commissioned from uh, the Institute for Research and Social Services. Um, and the nine points were different, and I would beg to differ with you on that point from what has gone before. What we've seen before uh, in community health uh, partnerships and community health and care partnerships has been um, a partnership that's largely um, uh, within the NHS and the board functions as a subcommittee of the NHS board and the sense of um, the kind of parity of esteem argument, the, the sense that um, the local partnership and the national agenda were working together um, just wasn't always uh, very clear and there's a number of instances around Scotland where partnerships have broken down where you can evidence this. So one of the things we thought was very, very important was that um, we should ensure that there was accountability, joint accountability, both to national and local leaders and I think that, that that was an innovation, I don't think we've seen that before um, and so accountability to the local authority and to the Scottish ministers. We thought very much from the evidence that the strength of um, an integration proposal was if government owns what's it and, and that's to say sets the framework, gives us the direction, gives us the drivers for the change but then says to local partnerships now you find your own creative way forward and that's the way that adults learn in my view and that's the way that we're most likely to get success because we have to recognise that Glasgow is not Gala Shields and uh, in, in these different circumstances in which we live we need to be able to create um, rich and vibrant partnerships that work for us in our localities and so we thought very important 
government sets the framework, government provides the, um, the strategic leadership together with um, leadership that can be derived from the local partnership. I would agree with you that some of the things we say about uh, joint strategic commissioning, um, you can say, well, there's, there's nothing very much new there, we've tried this before. But what we haven't done is set it within this kind of context. And, um, and now I keep going back to it, but the sense that um, we, we now have within these proposals integrated budgets. We now have within these proposals joint accountability. If we, as you, can make this real in, in legislation within Scotland, then the joint commissioning um, arrangements will work like they haven't worked before, in my view. So I think that you, you already um, have, within the current proposals, some, some very strong moves in this regard. The joint financial governance framework that we argued for, as I say, I think is new. I think it's... It's not easy. Before you go, I'll see if you can help me. Mr. Law. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Doris, question about um, local budget, uh, local involvement in service design and in budget uh, expenditure reminds me of Annie Gunner's uh, comment to the last uh, panel when she said that uh, her experience of, uh, I think, the change fund was like being guests at a wedding. Uh, it's a vivid metaphor, but I, 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 I think it's in. I hope it's inaccurate. The one I would prefer is that is that a fa of a family reunion because we're <coughs> part of the same family. We inhabit different space, and we're coming together to try and make sure this integration works. And the point about integration uh, is it only works if everybody plays in. And um, there's things that the third sector do and the independent sector do that nobody else can do. So I'm, when I'm talking about integration it isn't just between health and local authority social care we do need um, an integration of all the talents and that has to begin in how we think about our services how we listen to what people want and how we develop them locally so um, in my own local authority in Scottish Borders we've been developing a um, place-based approach to integration with a focus on a local area bringing in all, all the players uh, the, from the third sector, from the independent sector, from health and social care, and trying to develop a model within one small area where we have um, consulted with local people, um, with local stakeholders. We've developed uh, a model, and we're now transforming a local hospital, and the, the local government committee came to see it last week. That kind of locally based involvement from the beginning, not lip service as we heard, but genuine uh, buy-in to the way in which these changes come about, is how I think it will work in Scotland. And that's why I'm passionate about give us the space to, to create the change. Give us the uh, expectations with a framework of principles that you want us to adhere to. Give us the outcomes that you want us to achieve. And then let us go away and create. And that's what we do best as partners. Themes, issues that we may have. You. Um, I, Trader, I'd just like to. Uh, you, I think you made a gentle tease uh, at my expense in relation to um, the issue of leadership and offering leadership from ADSW in this debate. I mean, we we make no apology for it, but it is a leadership that's with others. That's the point. We're taking our, our um, part in this, and we're very, very keen to uh, get behind this agenda but to continue to uh, make sure that we remember in Scotland about the great value of um, social work and rather like the general practice that we deal with the whole person from uh, the baby to the offender to the older person and um, we cherish that as well. The ritual wards model which the Mary Hill practice in Elgin have developed, not developed, but are using as, as well worth looking at. And why not look? There are interesting models of integrated care developing in England, particularly not so far away in Cumbria, where there are integrated care organisations currently set up last year, which are working and, and being evaluated under the Cumbria Clinical Commissioning Group. Okay. Thank, thanks uh, very much for your attendance in the... the the evidence you have given us a smaller. Thank you all very much indeed.